Tamarindo, Costa Rica, and Puerto Escondido, Mexico, two very popular beach surf towns that Lori and I have had the good fortune of spending a long time in each of those, three months in Tamarindo, Costa Rica, and almost six months in Puerto Escondido, Mexico. Today in this video, we're gonna compare for you these two towns based on our experiences there. We're Aaron Lori Miller, and this is our YouTube channel, Plan Free. So the comparisons we're gonna make between these two locations today are based on our experiences in both of them during a traditional North American winter between about November and May. Yeah, because almost all of you watching this video are gonna be from either the USA or Canada. Shout out in comments if you're watching this from another country. There are 10 main points that we're going to compare between Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca, Mexico, and Tamarindo, Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. Point number one would be beaches. I feel like that's a good place to start considering both of these towns are primarily attractive to people that love the water, uh, beach and surf towns. So let's start with the beaches. That's why we picked both of those locations was for the beaches. Mm -hmm. In Tamarindo, you're going to have virtually one long continuous beach, starting with uh, Playa Tamarindo right in sort of downtown. And you can walk all the way along this beach uninterrupted all the way until you get to Playa Langosta. And both of those beaches you can surf on. We spent considerable time in both of them. Playa Tamarindo being right in downtown Tamarindo is going to be the, the busier beach. You're going to have uh, quite a bit more people, uh, a, more diversity of people. You're gonna have things like uh, local vendors trying to sell you things, trying to sell you boating tours or uh, basically everything, surf lessons. It's, it's gonna have a lot of a hustle bustle feel to it, but it's an excellent beach. It's also a very good spot for the beginning surf lessons. It has, generally speaking, I would say a smaller surf than Playa Langosta does. If you're more of a intermediate to advanced surfer, or let's say you're like Lori and I and you love to body surf, and or you like a beach that's a little bit quieter but still has a very good vibe, you know, a lot of beach volleyball going on in the evenings, what have you, you're probably gonna end up down in Playa Langosta a little bit more often. And that's certainly where we hung out 98% of the time. Mm -hmm. It was quieter, there was just less people, the waves were just exactly what we were looking for there. Not a lot of risk with um, colliding with actual surfers on boards, <laughs> but there was still some of that, but. yeah. And then just one note too, that's going one direction from Playa Tamarindo down to Langosta. If you go the other way, it also connects with beach after beach after beach. A whole bunch of names there, Playa Flamingo, Playa Coco, I believe, Playa Grande. They, so it's one just long stretch. Yeah, now it's pretty well endless beaches in Tamarindo. However, I would say that almost all the beaches are basically the same with subtle differences. When you compare that with Puerto Escondido though, Puerto Escondido right basically in the town within 15 minutes of each other has six or seven different beaches that are um, separated by cliffs and rocks. Yeah. And a lot of those beaches have different personalities to them. So mm -hmm. Puerto Escondido will, in compared to Tamarindo, have more personality and diversity in their beaches. In Puerto Escondido, you've got anything from mm -hmm. family oriented beaches with almost no waves at all that are good for snorkeling and kids for swimming to beaches that are uh, tucked away and quiet out of the way like uh, Playa Corral, which is popular with the um, folks that like to take their clothes off. And then you've got close to that, you've got Bococho, which in our opinion can have fairly big waves, uh, but it's very popular with the, that's generally where you'll go to do the turtle releases. Mm -hmm. In between Playa Bococho and Playa Corral is Playa Coco, where Lori and I found our sweet spot for body surfing. We probably body surfed there upwards of 80, 85% of our time there. But in addition to that, you still have beaches like uh, the most famous surf beach there, which is uh, Playa Zicatela. And it is huge and long goes all the way to Punta, so it probably turns into Playa Punta at some point in time, but it's virtually the same beach. And mm -hmm. at some points in the season, that Playa Zicatela can have some of the largest surf in the world, attracting surfers from all over the place to take in those waves. So to sum up the beaches, Tamarindo is basically one long beach with not a lot of variety um, or, or difference in drop-offs and wave size, beach size. It's just one long beach, whereas Puerto Escondido, you're gonna get many different beaches some are long like Tamarindo, but you're gonna get smaller, different um, vibes on the beaches too. 
Yeah, anywhere from beaches that are virtually desolate with you and maybe one other person way down there on it, to beaches that are very compact and crowded with lined with beach restaurants and lounge chairs and umbrellas. Yep. So it's kind of like whatever your speed is, Puerto Escondido has a little bit for everything as far as their beach diversity. Mm -hmm. More options. More options. The second point that'd probably be the most important for you watching this video is the waves. Now, both of these towns are clearly going to have waves because they're both known to attract surfing crowds in their surf towns. Tamarindo's waves, I would say, are more, especially Playa Tamarindo, are more of a beginner to intermediate wave type that uh, mm -hmm. crests sort of a good distance out there and then sort of, uh, I would call it softly, rolls into the beach, which is perfect for learning how to surf. I'm not sure if they'd be powerful enough to body surf, but they're excellent for the beginner surf crowd. Then when you go down to Playa Langosta, I would call those waves maybe intermediate, where you would find a lot of sort of novice surfers, uh, intermediate, or you do find some excellent surfers there as well. Mm -hmm. The waves get to the size where now you can body surf quite well. I would actually put that as probably the, one of the best body surfing beaches we've ever spent time on. Yeah. And again, that wave is going to sort of crest and roll of good ways out and then sort of push a long distance in where when we were body surfing there, we were often running out of our lung full of breath before the body surf was over. When you compare that, generally speaking, to the waves in Puerto Escondido, the waves in Puerto Escondido generally lift faster, fall further and crash harder. So for body surfers standpoint, in Puerto Escondido, you need to be a little bit more selective and not just every beach will do. Beaches like uh, Playa Coco, Playa, or sorry, Playa Corral, Carrizo Leo, most of the year when we were there, they don't really have enough wave power to body surf on. And if they do, the waves would crest too far out for you to stand on the bottom to body surf. Mm -hmm. Now, from a surfer standpoint, you're usually gonna find beginner surfers at uh, Playa Carrizo Leo. You've got lessons going there almost all the time. Then you've got uh, another spot, which is all the way down at the end of Punta, which is excellent for beginner surfers. Now, Playa Zicatella, and, well, primarily Playa Zicatella was, is going to cater to more novice and advanced surfers. And like I said before, even sometimes a year it gets into some absolutely monster surf that you would only want to be involved if, if, in if you were an absolute expert. Okay, sum it up. Which one's got the best waves? For me, uh, Playa Langosta and Tamarindo would have the best waves for body surfing. And then in Puerto Escondido, Playa Coco would have the best for body surfing. The surfing crowd watching this, maybe you can chime in in the comments and add what your favorite uh, surfing beaches are of the, ones, of the ones we've mentioned. We loved both locations for body surfing, though we, we couldn't choose one or the other. We're just trying to compare for you in case you have to decide. Both locations, you'll be super happy. Mm -hmm. Now's a great time to go ahead and press the like button if you haven't already. The third point is going to be comparing the snorkeling. The snorkeling in Tamarindo is virtually non-existent. We the Pacific Ocean any. is pretty dark there. It's pretty murky. Yeah. Now that's not to say that Costa Rica isn't a, a snorkeling destination as a whole. It's a massive country. And the nice thing it has going for it is that it has not only one coastline on the Pacific, but a whole nother coastline on the Caribbean. So if you're into snorkeling and you're going to Costa Rica, mm -hmm. you might want to, I would encourage you to focus on the Caribbean side of the country. But for the po purposes of this video, we're comparing Tamarindo as a location to Puerto Escondido. And in our experience in Tamarindo, that the three months we lived there, we didn't find much snorkeling. If any, yeah, it was virtually non-existent. Now, comparing that with Puerto Escondido, I wouldn't say Puerto Escondido is exactly a world beater as no. far as snorkeling goes. But if you work at it a little bit and find the right beaches, there can be some moderately good snorkeling. We would recommend and encourage you to go to Playa Manzanillo and go to the far side and snorkel along those rocks where you will find half decent snorkeling, won't you? Yep, the best in the whole Puerto Escondido area, we would say. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're uh, snorkel forward and you're going to Mexico and you haven't chosen your location, you may wanna also consider the Caribbean side of Mexico or the inlet of the Baja California Sur, where they have the Sea of Cortez and some very good snorkeling there as well. The next thing we'll compare is the climate and the weather in both locations. Yeah, so the weather in Tamarindo, Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rica is largely known for its rain, especially during the traditional winter months, uh, North American winter months. But what you have to understand is Costa Rica is very diverse in uh, their climates and uh, their geography. And so Tamarindo is actually kind of a little microclimate inside of Costa Rica where it's almost desert-like, it's pretty dry. Yeah. You'll see things like uh, 
horses and cows and cowboys and stuff. And so while it will still get rain during these months, it won't be a major focal point of your stay. You'll mm -hmm. get some rain in the afternoon for let's say an hour or so. You'll sometimes get rain, you know, during the night or overnight. But we didn't find it was a major uh, drawback or heavy, heavy rain like it was, uh, for example, in Sierpe, Costa Rica or mm -hmm. in um, uh, Volcan, Panama when we lived there. So you will get some rain, not a big deal. It's mainly humid, hu the humidity level and really warm, 33 degrees Celsius uh, every day in Costa Rica. So air conditioning in your, in your condo or your rental unit is really nice. Uh, for us, the body surfing part of Tamarindo really appealed to us because it was so hot. We were like, let's hit the beach. And we stayed there for three, four hours almost every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hot there, but I, I would say that it's quite similar to Puerto Escondido's weather where you're going to have in that 30 to 33 zone when we first got to Puerto Escondido for the first, let's say three months, three months plus, it wasn't very humid. It was actually kind of dry, dry. and pleasant. Yeah. Uh, and then the humidity began to build towards the end of our stay in Puerto Escondido. Now, comparing the actual weather, I think it rained one time when we were in Puerto Escondido the entire six months and uh, all the locals related to us that that was a freak incident yeah. and that it doesn't generally happen during the winter. So if you like to get away and be warm, but you don't necessarily like to be rained on almost at all, Puerto Escondido might be a good choice for you. If you like the odd shower here and there, Tamarindo might be more for you. Okay, the next point we're gonna compare is wildlife. Well. Costa Rica, right? Costa Rica, you've probably heard, has some of the best wildlife uh, going in the world. And uh, yeah. it's true, even in a town like Tamarindo, which is a semi-urban environment, touristy. I would say. Yeah. yeah, touristy, there's people everywhere. You're gonna have monkeys uh, crawling right through the town or certainly the right. outskirts of town. Right on our roof, we'd go to bed at nights and the monkeys were climbing around and monkeying around right on the balconies. Yeah, so the wildlife here, it's uh, immersive type of experience in Tamarindo. In addition to that, you're going to see many different uh, birds. Of mm -hmm. course, some of the most notable ones is the scarlet macaws that you will often uh, see flying overhead and even more often here in the distance in the trees, not too far off. Mm -hmm. So uh, from that standpoint, iguanas are everywhere, but that's in both locations. Uh, I would say obviously the wildlife is more, more uh, numerous and uh, more noteworthy in Tamarindo mm -hmm. than it would be in Puerto Escondido. Mm -hmm. Puerto Escondido still has some wildlife, like I say, in the form of iguanas. They still do have birds Bird. and bees and all yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff, but Costa Rica would just have the more memorable type of wildlife. Okay, so we'll talk a little about the size and the population of both towns. We've had people comment on our videos before saying, you can't compare this with this. The reason we're doing it is because we, we talk about and compare places we've actually lived in. We're not gonna just go choose some random spot around the globe and compare it when we haven't actually been there and experienced it for ourselves. So we wanna give you on the ground, real life experience and not just um, in and out in five days and we're experts either. We're gonna compare again Tamarindo with Puerto Escondido. So it, mm -hmm. this is based on our experiences in both locations. Exactly, it's a good point. Even though the population of Puerto Escondido is roughly four times that of the population of Tamarindo, sometimes people say, oh, it's unfair to compare the two. Yeah. But like Lori said, we've lived in both of them and this is why we're comparing them. So it's not necessarily a competition, it's more of a comparison. Try to keep that in mind when we go on to these next points and we compare them from the standpoint knowing that one is four times the population of the other. Yeah, and it's kind of just nice to know what you're gonna get. One's a little bit smaller, one's a little bit bigger, one's got amenities, one doesn't. The approximate population of Tamarindo, Costa Rica is around 9,000 people. Comparing that to the population roughly of 37,000 people in Puerto Escondido, Mexico. All right, we'll briefly touch on the money in each location for you because we've commonly had people say, well, we don't really feel like doing mental exercises regarding conversions. So we prefer to go to places that are either on the American dollar or pegged to the American dollar so that I don't have to do any conversions while I'm on holidays. I don't know if that's a big deal for you or not, but both of these locations, you will have to bring your conversion brain because <laughs> in Costa Rica, they have the Colón, which is their own independent currency and it's not pegged to the American dollar. So you'll have to do some calculations to figure out you know, what these prices actually mean in your home currency. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in Mexico, of course, they run on the peso 
And uh, again, you'll be doing some conversions and not pegged to the American dollar uh, in these two locations specifically. If you're going to even more popular tourist destinations than the ones we're discussing in this video, maybe they accept American dollars more often and you won't have to worry about it. But this is location specific to Puerto Escondido and Tamarindo. Yeah. Let's now compare the cost of living and the availability of products and services. We'll start with Tamarindo in Costa Rica where the cost of living is generally going to be a little bit higher as compared to Puerto Escondido. The cost of living in Tamarindo, when we were there anyway, I would put it on probably on par or slightly above the Canadian cost of living equivalent. Mm -hmm. However, in Tamarindo, you're going to have quite a narrow availability of products and services as you would be accustomed to if you live in the USA or Canada. When we compare that with Puerto Escondido, Mexico, you're going to find a slightly lower cost of living as compared to Tamarindo, probably around 20% less we found than the equivalent cost of living in Canada. Mm -hmm. Coupled with a much greater availability of products and services available here, which is probably partly explained by Mexico being that much closer, in fact, it's next neighbor to the US. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of inter-border uh, trade and availability of products. Yeah. Most of the time when we're in Mexico, we're very satisfied with the amount of products and services that are available to us. Whereas in Costa Rica, quite often, it has been a little bit of um, a bone of contention. <laughs> All right, is food important to anyone out here watching this video? Me. For us, we kind of like to eat. We practically want to do it every day. <laughs> So in Tamarindo, Costa Rica, I would say that the food was a little bit more narrow in its choices. Most commonly available is something called typical food, which is Costa Rican cuisine, which is primarily going to consist of rice, beans, and a meat, whether it be fish or chicken or beef or whatever. And But they'll jazz that up. So it could either be meat, rice, and beans, or beans, rice, and meat, or meat and beans, or rice and beans, and a yes, salad. that's true. However, in Tamarindo, you're still going to find, you know, let's say one pizza joint, one sports bar to get your wing fix, and, you know, sort of one sushi place maybe, or, or two by now. But a, a few different offerings is what we found in Tamarindo, and the prices are going to be high. It's a tourist destination. Comparatively speaking, in Puerto Escondido, you're going to have a much wider array of the local regional cuisine. Oaxaca Mexican food is, you know, becoming quite famous and known and for good reason. They have a, a variety of dishes available and many of them are quite good. Mm. Now, when you start to branch out into restaurants, Puerto Escondido is not only gonna have, let's say 30 to 50 Mexican restaurants, they're also going to have a mm -hmm. smattering of basically every different geographical region represented there. Yeah. So compared to Tamarindo, where Tamarindo might have one or two or three Italian restaurants, uh, Puerto Escondido might have a dozen, for example. And you can sort of apply that across the board. You know, you've got anything from Italian to Argentinian to Asian fusion to Chinese to yeah. um, Ukrainian, Polish. You've got basically every, well, most geographical regions represented here. In Puerto Escondido, even Lebanese, all kinds of stuff. Whereas in Tamarindo, you're going to get just the one sushi place, the one or two pizza places, the one sports bar. Yeah. So I would say the food experience specifically was heads and feet above uh, in Puerto Escondido as compared to Tamarindo. We encourage you to watch this video next. My name's Air. I'm Lori. This is Plan Free. If you like what you see here, go ahead and click the like button. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more content and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. We'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye for now.